Hey folks, Andy here from Andy McSweeney Photography and Photo Tour Bruges. All right, as a lot of you know, I had the Fujifilm GFX 50S medium format camera for the last uh, little while. Fujifilm Belgium was kind enough to lend it to me, no strings attached for a good week. Turned into eight days. Thanks again, guys. And uh, well, now that that's gone in the past, sadly I don't have the unit in my hands right now. It's gone back to, uh, to Brussels. But gang, now... I'm clear my head cold. I can talk again without, you know, sinuses acting up. I can look at a screen without my eyes weeping, all that sort of thing. It was a bit of bronchitis. You know, it's like having an alien just squeezing on your brain. So it's a little late, but here we are with the review side of things. I'm actually going to do a few videos of review because I use the, the GFX in quite a few conditions. And this one is focused on people. And when I say people, I mean people around Bruges. I, you know, got out there a little bit extra over the week with the GFX and got to try this camera out in a nice variety of conditions. We went from studio lighting to natural lighting, both indoors and out. We even did a little bit of low light over a couple of glasses of wine. And uh, well, I think you're going to see this camera can hold up to a lot. And hopefully with this review and just my thoughts on it, uh, it'll give you a better idea of what the GFX does. And part of why I'm so pleased to have it for the week. Now, I will say before diving in, it's not the deepest of technical reviews. I think there's plenty out there on the GFX from people who are, frankly, just, you know, on the technical pixel peeping super close level, maybe a little bit more experienced and authoritative than I. I know a few things and we'll talk about that. But, you know, if you're here for the pixel peeping review, I got a couple things, but make sure to check out some other reviews too, because this one, guys, is on the aesthetics of the image, the results, and working with the camera, uh, where I found it worked out great, you know, as far as a few points like autofocus, image quality, grain, depth of field, all that sort of thing, and uh, just overall, you know, how the camera was to use, and just a uh, few thoughts there. So I hope you find this useful. I'm going to flip over to Lightroom now so you can see some of the images harvested. And make sure to stay after we flip back to this uh, Andy cam so you can see my conclusions on uh, the GFX. And hey, if people aren't really what you're looking at the GFX for, stay tuned or look out for my uh, upcoming videos in the landscape review variety and all sorts of other stuff I got up to with the GFX. So why don't we switch over to, uh, you know, photo view and let's dig into those files. Right gang, we have 68 photos and maybe even a little bit more to get through, so why don't we get to them? Uh, opening photo is from the 63 millimeter 2.8 lens set at f8. I was uh, taking a couple test photos of Dirk from Fujifilm Belgium, the fella kind enough to uh, you know help me out where possible including getting this GFX for a week. And you can see, gang, when I zoom in for the details, why don't we zoom in a little bit more? There we go. Nice, sharp, clear on the uh, pin and lapel side of things. We got loads of sharpness to work with. You know, I mean, here you can see Dirk's rather handsome hairline is holding in together and sharpness across the board. So much skin detail. It might be a little embarrassing to Dirk, so we won't stay there too long, but yeah. Lots to work with. And of course, with the medium format camera, the bigger sensor, the lenses, all that good stuff is going to come together. This is, of course, a prime lens that's dedicated to the cause. So, you know, everything really plays out well. What I did find interesting and part of why I wanted to share this shot is the fact that if you look at how I cropped this photo, it's quite extreme, isn't it? I won't restore to the default, but you can see I'm cropping in at least... 50, 60, maybe even 70% to just get to the part of Dirk that I really wanted to focus in on. And that's part of why I have an interest in this camera because, you know, I'm not going to lie to you guys, especially some of my environmental portraits on the move, events, that kind of thing. I'll find myself cropping in a little bit aggressively at times just to really nail down the shot. And that's where this camera does really well. You know, I mean, it's far from the only one on the market that can uh, crop to this sort of range and still give you a very workable print size. But hey, GFX passes uh, pretty much with flying colors as far as I saw it. You can see also I'm at ISO 1600. So especially with the good light, the GFX does a really good job handling the grain, the noise, the slight lack of sharpness that might come in at uh, slightly higher ISOs. None of that is happening as a problem here. So nice. 
All right. Keeping with the look at the camera, kind of easy environmental portraits, if you will. This is Ian Van Lendijk, one of my photo buddies, and one of my photo buddies uh, is just part of it. He's also a good buddy. You can see we switched over to the 110 f2 lens. It is absolutely gorgeous. This is one of the uh, prime lenses that Fujifilm put out on day one, and you can see it looks real good. I mean, with a medium format camera, with f2 at your disposal, you got a lot to work with. Dropping down the depth of field is no real problem for this camera, especially, you know, just set up properly. Here you can see, you know, Ian's eye, sharp as a tack. Let's go right in there. But then already around the brow, it's starting to drop off, and then I get a little bit of depth of field back so that everything, you know, just plays as it should do with this kind of lens. Very bucolicious. That lens really shone in a lot of the uh, testing I used. And while I was using the kit lens of uh, 32 to 64, a little more often than not, I was real happy to have the 110 F2 in my bag. All right. There's Ian and Britt Marie in a nice little moment during that session. This guy's is pretty much off camera. You know, I haven't done any real changes. You can see the exposure has been bumped up a little bit. Why don't we just default that back? See, looks a little better with a little more brightness. But overall, this is very much off camera. The only thing that I've applied to this photo that I wanted to point out is under camera calibration or directly shooting on camera in JPEG. I always have the really excellent Fujifilm uh, film simulations on hand. For this one, one of my personal favorites for the people side of things in black and white is the Acros plus yellow filter. You can see it works out real nice. Let's go to Adobe Standard for a second. Very good. Very nice. So yeah, even if you don't feel like editing too much, uh, which, you know, I've done for a lot of these photos off camera under the right conditions and then just throwing a uh, film simulation on top of it, you can get some really good stuff to work with. With the environmental portraits, who else is going to get got but the silly guy? That, of course, is me. There's my new LinkedIn photo. That's because we uh, flipped it around on the camera between me and Ian. He came over. He brought a uh, real nice studio light. And, uh, well, I got put against the wall and had to sit down for a little session. Worked out real well. I got my LinkedIn profile photo. I got a serious Andy photo. I got a bit of screwing around. And, of course, at the end, we started screwing around a little more. You can see how the results are real, looking real nice, even when it's completely out of focus, like in this kind of silliness. Wonderful camera to use. And, again, at F2, especially in fine, capable hands like Ian's, for a portrait, when I zoom in, Oh my dear Lord, ID theft is coming my way with the amount of sharpness and detail I can get out of that. So very, very nice lens. And as you're seeing again, just really nice bokeh. The drop in depth of field plays out very beautifully. In fact, just for a second, why don't we go in on, on my pin for Photo Tour Bruges. And you can see it's just looking really smooth and nice. Fantastic portrait lens. Highly recommended. Oh, and look at that. Now we've swapped it up. We're again still in environmental portraiture, but uh, we're working under natural light. I haven't fired a flash or anything. In this case, there's a window next to me projecting uh, a little bit of mixed light. And as it happens, these are my in-laws. This is the uh, lovely parents of the lovely Mrs. Andy. With the week uh, on the Fujifilm GFX, one of the focuses and keywords was community. And obviously my in-laws are part of my personal community. So I wanted to make sure to get a nice photo of them. And they're sitting here, Ma and Pa, with uh, Charlie and Marie. We sat them down with the kit lens. I wanted to have a little bit of flexibility. I boosted up the ISO to 3200. And you can see, of course, when I zoom in, because it's a pretty good, nice natural light source, I've got a lot to work with once that loading uh, icon goes away and I get to see my full pixels. All right, look at that sharpness, look at that play. We got some grain in the darker areas, of course, but they're very, very manageable. Very, very, very workable. And like you can see, I mean, I'm even catching the fluff on the jacket over here. So that's real nice, and I think that zipper shows where the sharpness still excels. What I also found interesting about the GFX, something that would very much think about it uh, towards a purchase, when I make my changes, I do my edits in this kind of extreme lighting. I'm pushing down the highlights and pushing up the shadows. 
I play around on a couple more things. You can see the exposure has taken a bump overall, a bit of clarity, and a lot of these uh, photos worked out well. And the only thing I haven't done on here, you can see I've even put in a little bit of vignetting and such. I haven't gone to the camera calibration yet and applied a film simulation profile. And the reason I wanted to mention this is just in case you're looking for tips for the GFX, I find when you apply these profiles, even the Provia standard, just a sort of what a, a Fuji standard might be considered, it looks real nice here. The tones, the colors, everything comes together just that little bit more. So definitely take a look at the film simulations, either on camera shooting in JPEG or, of course, applying them in RAW afterwards like I did. All right. Ooh, another little environmental portrait, this time at Pro Dale. This is Natalie and Christoph. They're the proprietors and the lovely couple who run the place. Uh, really nice little cafe. You know, again, with the community aspect of things, I was uh, reaching out to some of my community at large. Pro Deo is somewhere me and the missus like to go for a meal, and certainly in Bruges and Belgium, food is definitely where community come together. So Pro Deo is a really nice local spot. It's by the windmills on the Langstraat, and I highly recommend it. And obviously for this portrait, I was real happy. They do a bit of a northern soul kind of thing in their lives and their cafe. You can see Diana Ross and the Supremes are hanging out. The Golden Torch is another record cover used as a uh, menu holder. And, well, why do we go back in? Because now, with the loading done, you can see I still have a wonderful amount of sharpness, detail, and just everything's really flying through. And for this one, gagging... <clears throat> Excuse me, in case it wasn't obvious, you can see by the hard shadows on the flash, I was using a flash for this. Sorry, I shouldn't say hard light on the flash on the lights, mean that I was using a flash. And, you know, that only made sense. It was uh, kind of dark. I didn't want to push the ISO up too far. I wanted those nice rich colors until I applied, it, applied a uh, chrome filter at least. And it just played out really well. At 1 30th of a second, everybody can hold still long enough that we got a good amount of definition and everything else. And just, you know, another shot where I felt the GFX did really well for environmental portraiture. Here's another one. Keeping with our restaurant motif, this is Park Restaurant, and these are the proprietors, Frederick and Axel. Hello. Frederick runs the kitchen, Axel runs the floor. They're a set of brothers who have uh, the number one rated restaurant on TripAdvisor. Me and the missus have been there more than once, and uh, we like to think of them as part of our community, food and otherwise. You can see I sat them down at the mayor's table for this shot. Why don't we show a little detail, even up at 800 ISO at an eighth of a second, something that's still in static, that's going to have no problem, especially considering I was using a tripod to, uh, to work out. And of course, for this shot, again, using a flash, I just wanted to uh, get a nice sharp impression of the staff. Why is that loading going on so long? Maybe it's recording these videos. But trust me, gang, that ends up sharp as a tack. Oh, there you go. And when I move around to the characters and play, Axel's looking real nice and sharp, especially the glasses, the hairline, all that sort of thing. I get a nice drop in the depth of field because I'm shooting at f5.6. So even myself reflected inevitably into the mirrors because that was the only spot I could get. Uh plays out well. So very, very happy with this. And I should note on this one, I kept the ISO a little bit lower than usual. I asked them to hold a little bit extra still because I really wanted to get those rich colors. And I think it was the second or third night with the GFX. I was still feeling things out. I knew this was uh, a once in a very rare occasion kind of portrait. So I wanted to uh, just lock down those colors. And luckily, everything worked out. As I say, this camera can handle a lot. You can see also, this little uh, snapshot I grabbed of Axel and his lovely wife, environmental portraiture, firing the flash, getting that nice drop in the depth of field. It can all play out very, very well. I won't zoom in too far on acne or what have you that anyone might worry about if they see themselves zoomed in so much. But you can see Axel's, again, healthy hairline. It's nice, sharp, clear. And just real quick towards there, I'll look at that eye line, look at his lovely wife's hair, her eyes, everything played out super wonderful. And there's a little shot from Hof van Brup. That is a uh, fine little drinking establishment on the Langstrat. As I mentioned, harvesting my community members and uh, just getting around and seeing people, grabbing a couple photos, uh, 
you know, for this, that, and the other. I had to drop by uh, one of the nicest cafes I know in Bruges. I'm not a huge drinker, but I do like dropping by there every now and then. And you can see with the fading light at ISO 3200, F4, one tenth of a second. I get a reasonable sharpness from this. I mean, this was a quick moving moment. You can see the glasses are playing out well. I do believe I also used a flash, especially seeing a couple of reflections here, although those could have been street lights. But, you know, even with the blur and the photographer fail slightly on the focus, I still definitely have a lot to work with here. Oh, there's Demi. Let's get back into the daylight, daytime. This is Demi of Hair Tricks. You can see the uh, nice logo in the background. This man's my hairdresser. He does uh, my coif and tries to uh, make the best of a bad situation. And he does a real good job. He's also a top fella. You know, we chat away here, there, everywhere while he's chopping the, uh, the Goldilocks. And, wow, I got to grab a photo of my guy who does my hair. And, uh, you know, just as generally a fine fella, member of the community for sure. And Demi, we only had a couple minutes. <clears throat> you had a client, so I didn't want to uh, take too much of your time or, you know, distract from the job at hand. This is where I found the 32 to 64 f4 lens super useful, guys, because, of course, even though I'm pairing it up with a flash, I can still go down to f4 for a little more light, certainly for the drop in depth of field, which is one of the big appeals for medium format. Lots of good to work with here. And with this kit lens, when I only have two minutes, you can see... Zooming in a little bit at 51.7 millimeters. Nice head and shoulder shot with the uh, with the hair tricks in the background. When Demi does his cuts and is looking for something for uh, Instagram and such, he usually parks you in front of that. So I did the exact same thing. Jumped back to 32 millimeters on the uh, zoom range and squeezed it all in. Nice, clean, quick, and efficient. And then just somewhere in between the two on the way out, I made sure to catch this. The flash really did its job and you know, just wear that kit lens, aside from just the overall optics and fantasticness that I experienced with that lens, where it's really useful. And <clears throat> excuse me, if you have the option when you buy the camera uh, to get that kit lens, I would definitely take it. Comes in handy. All right, what's the next shot? Oh, we got Christian from Acceler Bikes. Looking good. I think a great example, again, where this lens pays off wonderfully. I've got a bank of windows behind me, so you can see there's a little bit of uh, blueness going on on Christian's uh, face from the white balance going out of whack from indoors to outdoors. Again, that drop with the depth of field and uh, buka that this kind of lens permits and this kind of uh, format really encourages. I think it's fantastic. And then when you talk about like color accuracy and doing corrections and such, as I mentioned, I've done a bunch of edits to these already, but I wanted to leave this for you to see. Oh, look at that. I've already done it. You can see I've applied a brush so that I can, of course, just do a little bit of white balance fixing. Why don't we just delete that real quick so you can see it? Boom. There's that blue tint of the outdoor windows coming in, and there's that easy correction that I applied afterwards. And when I zoom in, looking good doing it. Nice, eh? So yeah, very, very nice system. Very, very lovely color accuracy and manipulation is needed. In fact, I got to commend uh, Fujifilm. I really like their X Trans X sensors, the ones they put on their... Uh, X-series crop cameras. I'm sure you have heard of them because it's part of what launched this GFX system down the road. Uh, yeah, those are modified sensors that tend to accentuate colors and uh, work with higher ISOs a little bit better. A lot of people thought when the GFX uh, first came around in the rumor mill that it would have an X sensor in there. And they decided to go with a typical Bayer sensor, which is a little more traditional for uh, digital cameras. It's a bit more of an industry standard. It's a little better on the color accuracy side of things. And frankly, for a medium format camera, much as I love the X sensor or the Trans X sensor, I'm really glad they went bare just so I have that nice color accuracy that I can uh, depend on instead of the more creative results that I find the X series cameras do fantastically. But for a client minded medium format camera, I just, I'm really glad they went with the bare sensor. So kudos Fujifilm. Nice work. All right. There's a quick grab shot of Elisa. She works over at Burgundista Flandre. She was kind enough to pose, pose for the camera for a few minutes.
pretty lady looking pretty and the uh, camera making her look pretty is is deserved. That's Tom, one of the brewers over at uh, Burgundis de Flandre. Sorry that I never say it right, guys, but, you know, that nice brewery that opened up last year where you can take a tour. And Tom's one of the brewers. He's always got time unless something's about to uh, flow over to talk about beer and the brewing process. And part of what I liked about that place, just really open, friendly attitude. You know, they've only been here since last year and they're already making good waves, uh, becoming community members and being active in the community. So that meant that I had to drop by, see how the beer was brewed, fire off a few shots with the GFX and grab this nice portrait of Tom. And again, with environmental portraiture, I have a good amount of light in here. I'm firing the flash so I can make sure I grab Tom. Just good, good and proper as far as lighting goes. And again, with the kit lens, getting great results here. You can see the depth of field. When it drops off, it looks great. Really nice bokeh. Just really good lens. Hmm. Okay, that's a quick shot of one of the fellas at Lilu. The fella fellas don't really like their photo taken, but they let me drop by to play with the camera, and I wanted to throw that into the mix. Yo. Now... We're going to push the camera around a little bit aggressively. Andy, too, in fact. You can see by the wine on the table. Uh, this is actually on the very first night that I had the GFX. And I wanted to show these because one of my goals with the GFX is to see, you know, beyond the studio setups, beyond the well-lit scenarios, how this camera would do in low light. Now, this is actually shot for my X-T2, so don't take this as a reference for the medium format. You can see up there I was using the wide-angle lens, just firing away. Um, but it does give you an idea of the scenario I'm walking into, which is uh, drinks with friends. Some old friends, Tony and Sonia, and some newer friends, uh, even Adinda. They were kind enough to, uh, you know, let us butt into their lives and say, hey, guys, we let's get together for some drinks, a chat, and let me uh, fire off the camera around you. And this is where I'm going to be totally honest. I saw it where the camera has a little bit of uh, growth ahead of it. You can see under low light conditions. I mean, it was the first night with the camera. I'd read, don't push the ISO too far past 6400. So I kept it fairly low. And this is also, you know, where you got to watch your skill as a photographer, even at a 13th of a second. I think I could have gotten slightly better results. Also, especially being the first night with the camera, that my focus was coming and going as far as just really nailing it down. And, I mean, as far as autofocus, guys, in low light, don't expect too much out of this camera. I don't think I'm being cruel there. It's difficult for a lot of medium format cameras to, uh, to you know, really nail it down speedily in low light. So, you know, the GFX isn't alone here. But it is a situation where I might lean a little bit more towards my X-T2, my X-Pro kind of camera, or, uh, you know, something a little bit other than the GFX. Having said that, you know, you get the subject to hold still, you get all your settings right, you at least give it, you know, as much as you can and get as far as you can. And you can see sharpness, all that sort of thing work out just a little bit better. Very workable shot. Here, I've also thrown the ISO up a little more to 10,000 just so I can get something. And it works out pretty good. This is also where prime lenses that go down to like 2.8 could be quite interesting just to be able to get that slight little push on the shutter speed. And you can see at 10,000, the grain is obviously very prominent, especially in low light areas, but still workable. I've got something here. And actually, just going upstairs with Eve, asking him what's one of his most prized possessions and him showing me this framed uh, election poster of Akhil Van Acker, who is uh, one of the ex-Belgian prime ministers who laid a lot of the foundation work, if not uh, a lot of the hard work towards the social care system here. Uh, Eve has always admired him. Socialist Party here in Belgium is uh, not a small entity, and Eve is a proud member of the Red Party. And while well, basically, gang, we set him up for a portrait, you can see even uh, Mr. Van Acker's styling as far as the glasses inspired Eve, so it made a nice pairing. And this is also where 6400 ISO, you know, he'd held nice and still at 1 35th of a second. I got a good sharp result. The grain is much more manageable when the situation is a bit more well lit, and I definitely have something I can work with. And again, you know, with that F4 on a medium format, just being able to nail down the eyes, the glasses, and then being able to drop away from it, but still have some nice clarity. I think it worked out great. All right, there's a Dinda. Same question to her. Show me one of your most 
prized possessions and she showed me this beautiful photo of her a few moons ago and then we just got a you know a little bit of then and a little bit of now did a couple of shots and that you can see worked out quite well again just directing your subject when you're stuck with conditions where 1 35th of a second without pushing the ISO uh, is where you're about stuck maybe just ask the model hold still while you grab your shot and then it can work out real nice so it's a combination of the camera obviously but also the photographer and here kicking it up to ISO 12,800 as the wine in the evening grow long Eve went off to uh, check a couple mails and do a couple things and I just saw the lighting ambiently by his desk and went for it at that kind of shutter speed even just for this little pinch of light I get one two tenth of a second that's at 63 millimeters on the 63 millimeter f 2.8 lens so going prime and I nailed the focus right on Eve where I wanted it and it even such an extreme high ISO for this camera still very workable especially for a low light ambient shot like this I certainly have results that give me at least something to work with and it's not a small something either okay now we're flipping into the day this is again even a dinda i popped around again i realized uh, i hadn't gotten a portrait of the two of them so you know i just wanted to drop by and say thanks for the evening by uh grabbing a good shot of them and we hung out for a while they were they were about to have dinner guests over that evening so uh you know i just watched them in action and that's a nice little moment i got this is at iso 4000 that's how i got a nice you know, quick shutter speed, and I'm at a 5.6. And I think it shows, again, gang, where the sharpness on this lens can really excel. Even at high ISOs, very, very workable. And I should remind you, this is with no noise recovery or anything. So aside from what Lightroom threw on here and, you know, what my editing, editing might have done overall for uh, contrast and tones, aside from that, this is what the camera's giving you, and then you can work from there. Oh, who's this? strange little couple that must be me again and that must be mrs andy if i've got my arm around her we're a small town so otherwise people would be talking and actually guys this is ian on the camera again uh and this is where i met mrs andy about uh what 17 years ago been together for about 15 it's been a long story but it all started with me working in an irish pub and on the second day uh seeing this fine lady is one of my customers to say hello to and that's the spot that we actually met on nowadays it's an irish tapas bar uh on the langstrat highly recommended you can see it's a very cozy spot for old lovers to meet up and smile for the camera and look at each other do all that kind of thing i'm gonna spare you but i'll just get to the silliness right away and you can see this is with the 110 millimeter lens 3200 Still getting a good range of sharpness. I will spare you, Mrs. Andy, on the close-ups. Why don't I take the hit? Because you can see I still have a reasonable sharpness to work with overall. Pretty clear, huh? If anything, what's suffering most at this point is just the lower shutter speed, a little bit of motion. That kind of thing can start catching up with you. But still a very strong, you know, clear image to work with, even if the people inside are goofs. And speaking of goofs, here's another low light extreme situation with the uh, wives and girlfriends. Hello, ladies. Thanks for joining in the fun. And now we're back outdoors. This is uh, Yanis who makes these beautiful scarves. You can see him modeling one right there. He's working on his weave and, uh, you know, the morning light is popping out real beautiful. I had to grab a shot. I took it up to ISO 1000 because I know outdoors this grain is very very manageable especially it's still quite a low ISO for the this kind of camera I get 1 25th of, of a second as a result the reason why I pushed up my ISO gang is because I wanted to go to f14 because as uh, a few few of you may know and I guess a few of you uh, know now if you didn't when you turn the aperture up to such a high number you're going to get that nice starburst that can obviously make a very beautiful effect and even drive the photo all the way home. And as I think you saw from my random zoom-ins, still sharp as a tack as far as like, you know, what's in focus and where it works out. And of course, at f14, I'm going to get a little more depth of field, but still very manageable. Part of, again, where the medium format system just becomes very, very appealing. Pretty neat. So it's David DeGraff. This is, again, an outdoor environmental portrait. This was on the first uh, 
couple of hours with the GFX, I dropped over to uh, David de Graaf, who has uh, a fine little studio built into the Bonificus Bridge, the little house that's there. It's very picturesque. It's the smallest bridge in Bruges. And you should drop by if you uh, want to see David's work. He has an open gallery, and he's always very friendly to, uh, to people who drop by. You can see I'm mugging for the camera kindly as I just uh, have the camera fresh in my hands. And that's, again, with the 63mm 2.8 lens. Real easy to get a nice, soft background and separation going. When you get into the details, of course, you get this disgustingly wonderful amount of clarity, sharpness, all sorts of stuff that you can work with. Wunderbar. Thanks, David, for posing for that. And then just to roll through a few more photos. Oh, well, there's Mikey. He's uh, one of the boat guys around here. He has uh, Boats of Bruges. If you're on the social media, make sure to drop by. He posts some fun photos. His family has had the boat company since 1956. And, uh, well, there's some cool stuff popping up there. He's also a buddy of mine. I've gotten to know him over the last couple of years of doing the photo tour. And He's just been a star overall, it lets me jump on the boats. You know, of course, I uh, throw him a photo here and there if I see something nice that he might want. But he's been a really good fellow to uh, get to know. And, you know, him going out one morning like this uh, moment so that we could catch some so shots with the GFX before the boat started up is one to remember. And I was glad I fired off a frame there. There he is at work, working hard. There's Yoss, another one of the locals in the... Uh, circuit of my life. He runs Quasimondo Bikes, which uh, also meets on the Berg Square, just like my photo tour thing called Photo Tour Bruges. He's also a real character. He does some stage performing also, a bit of acting here and there. So I knew when I put the uh, lens in front of him, he'd work out real well on the camera. I always find performers are a great place to go to if I uh, need a few subjects to te test my cameras. And you can see again with the 110 at f2, really just nailing down uh, where I focused on and making it work out real nice. You can also see at F2, of course, the background of this brick wall is going to turn into a beautiful, bucolicious mess. And that's exactly what I wanted. Again, part of where this, this camera is just exceptional. And you can see even when I boost it up to F8, get Yoss as he giggles out. That gives me a little more depth of field, but it's still very pleasing as far as the separation and easy control to get towards that separation that the uh, the medium format format offers. Oh, look at that. There's Mayor Landite. I was running around the uh, first Bruges Marathon as part of my time with the GFX, and I bumped into him. He was kind enough to, uh, you know, smile for the camera. Appreciate him smiling for the camera a couple times. You know, I've caught him a few times, and when I've asked, he's always obliged me. So thanks, Mini Landite, for that. Keeping out with the environmental portraits and showing you where this camera does great. Here's Christoph. He was kind enough to let me jump on uh, one of the horse horse rides. That's us at a break at the uh, Lake of Love. That's a nice little close-up, again, showing where the 32 to 64 can pay off, even though I'm only at 48.2 on this. There's Peter, who runs Fitzcotton Brugge. That is the bicycle taxi service where you can get a nice historical tour wrapped into it. That's him uh, sitting at his workplace. And, you know, I wanted to give the couple in the background a little bit of privacy. So again, just being able to drop that depth of field and make it look good with the GFX. Very, very nice option. And I didn't actually end up going on a bike ride with Peter because I got Bart. And Bart's real top fella. He's been doing it for a couple of years with Peter. And, uh, you know, he knows his stuff. Part of what I really loved about the ride with him was that he was a very animated fella. Here he's talking about something on the, uh, on the market tower and just describing it with full force and passion, just like I like. And you can see here where 32 millimeters is still very sufficient, even though I'm basically, you know, squeezed into a, uh, a bike taxi. I can at least get some of the outside, some of the inside. And at this point, with such heavy contrasty lighting, I believe the sun was behind the tower. I'm going to be giving and taking a bit, but I still have a lot to work with. And, uh, you know, where it nails it, it does a great job nailing it. That's Bart being passionate at work with uh, the, love, the woman I love passionately, Mrs. Andy. So... Nice little ambient quick shot that we could grab on the sly again where the kit lens just comes in so handy. Being able to, you know, work and...
do what I need to do. For this one, I fired the flash, so it balanced out the light, but again, where the GFX did really well. And in case I haven't mentioned it, let me just say the flash I was using, much as I think Fuji uh, do some great flashes, I happen to have picked up the METS M400 flash. So I'm not even using a Fuji to Fuji flash and it's still working out great. Like I said, the Fuji flashes have plenty of good to them, but uh, good to know that if you decide to go for another brand, you still got options. And speaking of options, just again, where the kit lens really pays off, being able to go from these wide shots and then zoom in, get a good uh, little detail on the fly, all that sort of stuff is part of where I'm really liking what the GFX offers. And there's Andy from Your Bruge. He does a uh, historical walking tour. It's got a little sense of humor and it works real well. And it's got loads of history. And Andy's a top guy. He knows what he's talking about. And he was kind enough to uh, wander around with me for a while. I wanted to get a shot at his meeting point, which is also on the Berg Square, opposite end from me. I'm over at the Basilica. He's by the City Archive. And, you know, because there were people around and they didn't seem to be going anywhere in any hurry, this is again where the medium format format um, camera just really pays off so quickly because you can just on the fly drop that depth of field and work with uh, what you got to work with. There's Andy out and about. Real nice lighting conditions, I think, showing what's going on as far as the possibilities. Now we're getting into the portrait side of things on the outdoor a little more intensely because while well, gang, I held an open photo portrait day as part of my time with the GFX, and you can see a few people dropped around. Why don't we just jump into those photos and you can take a quick gander. Look at that. Ayo, that. And there. 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 Oh, and blue steel there. And there, and there, photo by Peter Clairhout of Jono Photography, also by Peter, but there, and there. Ooh, who's that guy? Let's get out of there. So you can see as a portrait lens, this thing is definitely no slouch. This was all ambient photography on the loose and on the outdoors in the fish market, big open square, but even with all kinds of busy backgrounds, it was very easy to drop down and do what I needed to do as far as focusing on my subjects. So, excellent lens. So much so that at the end, even my friends were tired. They were kind enough to come over for, uh, you know, a few drinks and some hanging out with the camera and we were all messing about. And actually, if you want to talk messing about as a last photo for this little review of People and the GFX by Fujifilm, there's your family portrait. There's me, there's Mrs. Andy, there's the dog, there's one of the cats, and there's another one of the cats. Let's get out of there before you focus on that too much. No, even Google won't save you. Whoa. That's my thoughts on the GFX 50S as a people in portrait photographer. Indoor, outdoor, studio, ambient, what have you. Excellent camera to be able to do what you need to do. Why don't we flip back to Andy Cam? Okay, folks, I hope uh, looking at those photos and pixing, in, uh, pixing into those peoples, peeping into those pixels helped you out just a little bit as far as uh, understanding and maybe, uh, you know, knowing a little bit more about the Fujifilm GFX 50S. I'm real happy with the results. Why don't I even get into my conclusions on that note? You know, overall, like I think you saw in the photos, in a wide variety of situations, the GFX did a lot of really good work. You know, it's a strong camera. It's not got the smallest price tag for a uh, digital camera these days, but obviously, you know, you get a lot of reward for that value. You get the medium format sensor, you get really nice optics of the Fujifilm variety, and especially if you're an existing Fujifilm user, but even if you're not, you get a really nice camera to work with overall. And I mentioned that, guys, I'm going to do an overall conclusions video of, uh, of what I thought of the GFX, but as a people photographer myself, one of the things I find really important is to bear in mind I'm trying to engage with my subjects while I'm doing my portrait shoots. So so for me, the last thing I want to be doing is trying to, you know, make sense of the camera or work around its quirks or what have you. 
And I noticed that the, the GFX was just really straightforward, easy to use. Even if I hadn't been a Fujifilm user, I think it's very easy to figure out. And overall, it's got a really nice, like, uh, uh, ergonomic feel, just how it sits in the hand. And, you know, things like the flip screen, touch on the flip screen so you can, you know, focus or even fire away. And just the camera overall, it's a really good one to work with as far as dealing with people so that you can get on with dealing with people. You don't want to be fighting the camera. As far as the image quality, like I mentioned in the, uh, in the photos that we talked about and showed, sharpness and detail was certainly passing marks as far as the GFX uh, delivered. I found I got excellent sharpness even when I was doing aggressive cropping and even when I was pushing up the ISO. Because we'll talk about the ISO in a second, but don't forget, you turn up ISO on any camera, you do lose some sharpness and detail overall. So it was nice that, you know, sharpness, as far as the basic image quality and under I ideal conditions was really fantastic. But also, when it was pushed around, which was part of my mission with my time on the GFX, uh, it's good to know that when you push it around that you still got some very, very workable results. Okay, next to that, with the sharpness comes the detail. So I think we can say the detail is uh, pretty impressive too. I zoomed in real tight on some of those shots. That's also where I think the lenses did a great job, whether it was the uh, kit-minded 32-64 to f4 lens, delivered great. The 110 F2 I very much liked. That is a portrait photographer's dream lens. You know, that's probably why Fujifilm made and released it. And at F2 on a medium format camera, you get such gorgeous drops and depths of, depth of field that uh, it's really something to consider, you know? So, yeah, you know, sharpness detail, just those basics, especially on a medium format printing size when you count all those pixels and do all your extrapolations. You have a lot to work with and definitely something to consider. Certainly, after that, you have to look at the colors. You have to think about accuracy, especially if you're buying this for client work, for professional portraiture. You're most likely going to want to get accurate colors or at least have a good starting point. And I really love that this camera delivered great off camera. The, the auto white balance was actually extremely accurate. I used it for pretty much all those shots. Um, and, you know, I mean, you're shooting in RAW, so you do have a bit of flexibility afterwards. In fact, you have quite a lot. Uh, so, you know, excellent colors. It's nice to see. As I mentioned at one point in the uh, photo review side of things, I was really glad Fujifilm used a Bayer pattern instead of one of their Trans-X or X-Series uh, sensors. Because, well, frankly, that's what's going to produce a little more 100% uh, minded accuracy as far as colors go. And frankly, being an industry standard for a medium format camera that's most likely going to end up uh, towards the accurate or serious or even client side of photography, it was uh, very nice to see Fujifilm choose that. So excellent choice, Fujifilm, and, you know, just overall on the base technical side of things of sharpness, details, colors, ISO I mentioned is uh, certainly not bad, and to expand on that, it's very, very workable, you know. 3200, 6400 ISO, the grain does get a little bit heavy, but like you saw, especially with conditions in mind and a bit of give and take creatively, you can go right up to that 12,800 ISO and still have something very, very workable. In fact, look out for my landscape tutorial. I shot a couple on 12,800 just to show you what it looks like on a tripod. Yeah, and just really good job, Fuji. What can I say? You know, you, 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 I'm coming to expect this of Fujifilm, and I'm going to do a, a, another video of the GFX, just overall conclusions and what I think it means as far as what Fujifilm's up to with this camera and overall. But, uh, you know, for people work, I got everything I need. I got those technical bits. You know, I got a comfortable camera in my hands that I can work with easily. I noticed I did in one of my pre- week with the Fujifilm interview, uh, videos that, uh, you know, I mentioned how uh, impressing people with the camera is sometimes part of getting the photo, you know, walking in and saying, hey, I'm going to have a nine grand camera next week. Do you think uh, I could drop by and take a couple photos? If you don't know them so well, that could work out faster. Check out that video. But, you know, 
from the technical side to holding the camera to the impression it made on people, I found the GFX a real winner. And, you know, it's also heartening to think that this is Fujifilm's first medium format camera. So if this is their starting point, I like what I'm seeing. And, you know, I am going to be thinking about investing into the system. But until then, we've all got other things to do. I've got other videos to make. I've got other photos to take. I'm Andy McSweeney of Andy McSweeney Photography and Photo Tour Bruges. Hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please like, please share, please subscribe. Please maybe even find me on the other ends of social media, Instagram, Facebook. I'm either as Andy McSweeney, Andy, Andy McPhoto, and certainly as Photo Tour Bruges. So stay in touch. Say hey. There will be a couple more of these videos coming out and certainly plenty of photos of the GFX. And even when we're done these videos, this is opening up a whole thing. All right. I'm out of here. Thanks for listening. See ya. Get out there and get shooting. You thought I wouldn't say it, but I did. Get out there and get shooting. Go take some photos. Bye.